Greetings from Oklahoma City. Today we are going to explore this great city a little bit. We'll stop by the state capital, the stockyards, the Land Run Monument, the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, the Boathouse District, Bricktown, and, um, well, that's it. Stay tuned. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Good morning from Oklahoma City. Check out all these planes here to the left. I believe it is part of the Tinker Air Force Base. Here we are, the State Capitol building, which, by the way, it is Sunday, so it is closed. But we can explore the grounds outside a little bit and see the building itself. While the building dates back to 1917, the dome is relatively new, completed in 2002, and so is the sculpture on the top, called The Guardian. Well, eerily deserted here in the, in the Capitol area. Of course, it is Sunday. My timing as impeccable as ever, as I always say. As I always say, it's, it's a bit cold, uh, you know, borderline uncomfortably cold. It's probably low 30s, a little bit of a breeze, and in, this, in the shadow when the breeze hits you. And this is some kind of memorial or monument here with all the, all the tribal flags of Oklahoma. I believe it is the only state capital grounds with active oil rigs. These, of course, all the government uh, buildings here all around the capital. Very similar ar architecture, all of them. Yeah, it's that, in my opinion, ugly 1960s architecture, as if we were trying to emulate the Soviets or something. Our next point of interest, Stockyards City. The first thing I wanted to see here is the National Stockyards, the world's largest livestock market. Apparently on Mondays and Tuesdays, it is a thing to see, full of activity, particularly the fast-paced auctions. Obviously, I came in the wrong day, but if I ever decided I wanted to buy a cow, this would probably be the right place. A little bit of a more touristy area here in Stockyard City. There is a very famous steakhouse here called Cattleman's, which kind of makes me wish I was hungry because what better place to have a good steak than here, right? In any case, the area is kind of dead, so let's continue. You know what we can do? Let's go up in the air, get our bearings. We're just west of downtown on the Oklahoma River. There's the stockyard down there. It is a huge facility. All right, let's go downtown. Let's check this out here in the back of the Bass Pro Shop. 
This was serendipitous, by the way. This is the Centennial Land Run Monument. The Centennial Land Run Monument commemorates the opening of the unassigned land in the Oklahoma Territory with the Land Run of 1889. It is actually one of the world's largest bronze sculptures, featuring 45 figures frozen in motion as they race to claim their new homesteads. It is actually right here, next to the Bass Pro Shop. Very impressive sculpture. Alright, let's continue exploring. Next, we are going to visit the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. As you probably know, I'm not much of a museum person, but this one seems pretty good. This is called the end of the tail sculpture, a representation of an American Indian on horseback. Here's a statue of, who else, Abraham Lincoln. And a gallery with lots of beautiful paintings and sculptures. I am actually impressed with the amount of art in this museum. At first glance, I thought it was more like a history museum, but it is both, I guess. Garden gallery. Well, yeah, let's go into the garden gallery. There's a bunch of sculptures here around the garden, like this one called Coming Through the Rye. The resistance. This is the most famous statue in the whole museum, the Buffalo Bill sculpture, representing the West and all its heroic glory and legend. Because no other figure in the history of the West was apparently as loved and admired through the world as William F. Cody, Buffalo Bill, as the plaque says. It is quite an impressive statue, let me tell you. There are also a handful of grave sites and memorials scattered throughout the garden. More paintings and beautiful art as we go back in. Many exhibitions and more art. And exhibits. There's of course a movies section and a music section because why not, right? Most of us really got to know about the Wild West through the movies. Mostly, right? And they have a pretty large section here. There's also a section dedicated to the American rodeo and the women in rodeo. 
it goes on and on. I definitely did not allocate enough time. This is one of those museums where you could really spend almost the whole day. Anyways, this is Prosperity Junction, which is a replica turn of the 20th century cattle town at the time when the railroad arrived, which brought cattle from Texas, interesting characters, and of course, profits and prosperity. Ooh, the jail. That's not a very tall cage, is it? This must be the saloon, and uh, the bartender seems to be off duty. So what do you think they'll put the state cap? Could just keep it where it is now. Here's your meal. Some customers say it ought to be up for a vote, like they did in Texas. Sometimes, the city that's in the middle of the state just winds up being the capital. Hey. We're going to end it right here with this marble sculpture of a cougar called Canyon Princess. Well, yeah, massive museum here. You could really spend half a day easily in there. I rushed through it a little bit. I saw the, the parts that interested me the most and I, I didn't show you everything, actually. There, there's a bison exhibition that is seasonal, but very interesting. But yeah, overall, yeah, I, li I liked it. And I'm not the museum, you know, I'm not, I like museums, but I'm not like a museum person, if, if you know what I mean. In 100 feet, turn right toward Northeast 63rd Street. Take yeah. the next right toward Northeast 63rd Street, then turn right onto Northeast 63rd Street. The National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. Very, very well um, executed. Our next stop, the Boat House District. This is called Regatta Park. Imagine this as you are watching in the summer. Lots of people out and about. River cruises and people rowing, canoeing, kayaking. Hmm, must be nice. But we are here in the dead of winter, so I'm just gonna fly the drone over the river give you a bird's eye view, and then continue. The Boathouse District is a US Olympic and Paralympic training site for rowing, kayaking, and there's Riversport Adventure Park, which offers many outdoor activities, including whitewater rafting. Very, very cool area. Assuming this is more of a summertime destination. I'm sure it's really gonna be happening in the right season. Okay, let's go check out Bricktown. And there's a train.
take a look at all those people and all the traffic. There must be a game or something, right? Let's walk around a little bit. This whole area used to be warehouses, now repurposed as businesses, restaurants, shops. Very nice. I came back to check on the truck because I'll tell you a little secret. I'm not sure I'm supposed to be parked where I am. And uh, how the heck did they get that U-Haul truck up there? Very, very pretty area. And they even have a brewery. Well, I shouldn't act so surprised because craft breweries are flourishing in almost every city. Let's have a local IPA. I opted for the one called Three Guardsmen. Well, that was the Three Guardsmen IPA or something like that. Really good. And it's Oklahoma's first craft uh, brewery. Beauty is in the eye of the beer holder. <laughs> I see the Scooter Invasion has arrived to Oklahoma City as well. This actually reminds me a little bit of the San Antonio River Walk with the canal and the boats. Totally different boats and different architecture, of course. We definitely have to return. In spring, maybe. There's the Bricktown Ballpark, home to the Oklahoma City Dodgers. There's a statue of catcher Johnny Bench. Let's continue. Hmm, maybe that's where I was supposed to park. One cool thing about Oklahoma City is that just like Bricktown, there are several of these gentrified districts named after what the buildings in the neighborhood used to be in the past. Next, we're going to this area called Automobile Alley, because this is where all the car dealerships back in the 20s, the Model T era, used to be. You know, the golden age of the American automobile. It is a pretty decently sized district, so I'm going to park here at a different area and show you around. Apparently this used to be the Packard Oklahoma Motor Company. And there, that was probably another car company at some point. Before we go, let's take a quick drive through downtown, because let me tell you, time's up. The sun is going to set soon. Of course, a city like Oklahoma City, or OKC, deserves a lot more than the few hours I've spent here, but at least I got an idea, I got an overview of the city, and um, it Continue does... Street to stay on Southwest 3rd Street. In, it does have character, a lot of it is gentrified. Uh, like like a brick town and automobile uh, alley. Continue for three quarters of a mile. But I like it. It's pretty cool. A very clean city, by the way. Very clean everywhere. Yeah, we barely began to scratch the surface here, but we'll return. I promise. Oh darn! I forgot to come to this place. Well, 
there's always next time. Yeah, at some point I have to find an RV wash. But anyways, this is uh, it from Oklahoma City here, from the KOA. Such a beautiful afternoon to think that for the next uh, three or four days it is supposed to rain all the way back to Florida. Well, good night. Tomorrow we continue driving east on Route 66 in Oklahoma. Good morning. It is frigid. Mm, tiny little omelette with mushrooms and spinach. Oh, good morning. We're almost ready to leave here. By the way, my, fro my sewer hose froze solid last night and it is still frozen. But Anyways, as you can see, this tire is getting a little worn out here on the side, as it, as it usually does. So, it's time for a tire rotation here before we start heading east, almost making a beeline to Florida. accomplished let's get on the road okay this KOA the strange you know the, the office only opens like for two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening like you know so I, I was going to put some you know get buy some propane and, and couldn't Street, route 66 we're gonna take Route 66 here for a few miles. I don't know if we're gonna make it all the way to Tulsa. It's a long way. But, you know, we gotta do the mother road at least for for an hour or so, maybe two. I don't know. We'll see. Continue on Route 66. Coming up here to the right is our first Route 66 point of interest. And I need to put gas anyway, so we're going to stop. This is actually a relatively new attraction here on the Mother Road called Pop Arcadia, which opened up in 2007, and they sell allegedly 700 kinds of sodas, or pops. Well, this is called Pops, because they have all kinds of pops, like sodas, you know. Getting tired of the cold weather. Anyway, went back there and got my Route 66 guide. Let's see what there is to see here. And uh, I don't usually drink sodas a whole lot, but, or pop, as they are called, uh, pops. That's what this place is called, pops, because that's what it is. But once in a while, you know, uh, I do, and I got me this uh, Route 66 uh, black cherry with real cane sugar and a bunch of artificial stuff. But anyways, salute. Pretty good. <sighs> Let's continue. Get your kicks on Route 66. Yeah. Let me see if I can go around this truck here. Very cool, very cool looking pumps at this gas station. Pops. And this is a modern uh, Route 66 icon. I don't recall how long it's been around, but it's not from like the classic 50s or 40s days. Yeah, sometimes I talk too much. Coming up, the Arcadia Round Barn, America's only true round barn, and at one point the most photographed landmark on Route 66. It was completely restored in 1992. I know, you're all going to ask, why didn't you visit the Oklahoma City Memorial? I know, I've heard it's outstanding. But on this last leg of the trip, the last thing I needed was a downer. So I decided to save it for when I come back in spring or fall. Here's another Route 66 attraction, Butcher Barbecue Stand. And there's no one there. 
It's early, and there's a big tinfoil hat. Actually, I have no idea what that is. And we are now in Chandler. And I must say, Route 66 in Oklahoma in much better shape than out west. Going the whole way on Route 66 would be really cool, but I've come to the realization that if we continue on this road, we are never going to make it to Arkansas, at least not today, so reluctantly we must take the faster route. Tonight, we are going to be staying at a Harvest Host's location, a winery actually, and they close early. And then tomorrow, Little Rock. But all that will be on the next video. By the way, this video was filmed in February of 2019, but if you want to keep up to date with my whereabouts, follow me on Instagram, at TravelingRobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.